I've had pyroderma gangrenosum for 10 years and one month. I was treated for venous ulcers for five of those years. That involved triple layer bandaging, being told not to get the ulcers wet, and the surgeon wanting to remove my non-existent varicose veins. Pyroderma gangrenosum is a rare and very painful skin condition that causes rapidly spreading ulcers on the skin. It's an autoimmune condition that's also associated with other autoimmune conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis. I decided to do the stopgap trial in the hope of finding a cure or a standardised treatment. I don't want anyone else going through what I've been through. I want patients who have this condition to be diagnosed promptly and given the help we deserve. Pyoderma gangrenosum can sometimes be treated with topical medications such as potent or superpotent topical corticosteroids, but usually systemic therapies are required. And the two most commonly used systemic treatments are oral prednisolone, which is a steroid medication, or cyclosporine, which is a, a drug that affects the immune system. And we wanted to compare these two most commonly used systemic therapies head-to-head -head in the stopgap trial. Doctors and patients can choose either of these treatments safe in the knowledge that whichever they choose will, is likely to have similar benefit and they can choose one that suits their own preferences or their other comorbidities that patients might have. Our big surprise really was that neither medication worked terribly well. After six months, less than half of the patients also had healed and in those who did heal, one in three had a repeat attack. So this suggests that we urgently need new treatments for pyoderma gangrenosum. It's the pain that interferes with my daily life the most. It has driven me and my partner to the brink of insanity. It's the knowing that every time you reposition yourself or if you need to get up, you're going to be in the most awful pain. I also get sudden nerve pain in my legs and it's enough to make me yelp. It puts me off moving. On bad days, I stay in bed, only getting up for comfort breaks and to take more medication. The stopgap trial helped to raise awareness of this painful and debilitating condition, which is often misdiagnosed. These results are now being widely disseminated amongst many healthcare professionals, and patients themselves have been encouraged to take along the results of the study to share with their healthcare professionals. So for the first time, it means that patients and doctors can use this best quality evidence to make informed decisions about what's best for them. I live in hope of getting better, being able to lose weight and getting back to work. I hope.